We are very lucky today because Google was required to hand over some documents because of their lawsuit. And those documents really, really help SEOs like me and you who want to rank higher on Google. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna go over the leaks that Google has been forced to give the public and we are gonna tease them out into actionable things. Now, the first document we're going over is from 2018 and the purpose, they say the purpose of this thing is people in research are now making major contributions to Google search, delivering benefit to hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Awesome, great job, Google, you do a great job. Deepen in this collaboration would be awesome for everyone but they go on to say this is where it gets interesting outline this is what we're talking about in this document be careful in discussing search get a feel for search great search not great metrics etc but this first one really made me kind of laugh be careful in discussing search why because having a big impact da 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 we must tread carefully so check it out check this out be careful in discussing search because attempts to manipulate search results are continuous sophisticated and well funded they are talking about who who can do these type of things right um, and also that they are often sued therefore don't talk about things in the emails. Now I'm going to paraphrase, I'm going to speculate in this video because this is for entertainment purposes only. So if anyone from Google is watching, this is my opinion. So going on, um, it says da da da, my email and docs are currently retaining connection with four different lawsuits. In other words, Google gets sued all the time for different things. So they want to keep it on the down low, what's in their emails, right? I get that. They don't want a paper trace. So they give some examples here, but then it gets interested. Um, so be careful in discussing search. The UE fined Google 2.2 billion euros in connection with the aspect of search. So they're just saying, keep it hush, hush. Don't, don't email sensitive things. And that's reasonable, right? But then we keep going. And this is what I thought was great. Particularly, sen particularly sensitive topics. Keep talk about how search works on a need to know basis. Everything we leak will be used against us by SEOs patent trolls and competitors. I mean, the first one is SEOs. I, I When I first read that, I had to laugh. It will be used against us by SEOs. Well, now here we are and we have access to even more documents than this. Now, this slide is further in that same document. And we could probably stay here and tease this out by itself. It says search quality has many aspects. All these things, right? What is there like 20 here? Relevance, page quality, topical, diversity, personalization. Like some of these things, Listen, some of these things we've said on this channel, but like Google's saying it right here, personalization, right? All these things, but it says capturing everything in a metric is tough. Therefore, what do they do? So check it out. Some known shortcomings of live traffic evaluation, right? What Google does is it looks at user behavior to a certain extent, and they say the association between observed user behavior and search result quality is tenuous. In other words, it's difficult, it's hard, unless, unless we need lots of traffic to draw conclusions and individual examples are difficult to interpret. In other words, if there's a large data set, 100,000 people have come to these websites, say a stack of 10 websites, it's easy to figure out which ones are the best. And we're gonna dive into why that's the case. Now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes. Another slide, Google is magical from 2017. You may have seen this, this is not how search works. Google doesn't score the whole internet and then produce what it thinks is right. That's not how it works. Score and results, UX, SERP, that's not how it works. It works like this. It gives results to people and then people, listen, have you ever, let's just stop a second. Have you ever heard the, the, the saying, if you don't pay for a thing, then you are the product, right? That's what Google is. You, me and you are the product because advertisers, and this is how it works. Yet again, you are the product. You get results. You may click on it. You may stay on the page for two minutes and then Google knows this. It learns it and it knows which pages are the best. Now coming down a bit, it says the key is a second flow of information in the reverse direction, right? As people interact with search, their actions teach us about the world, right? Great. The dialogue is the source of magic. The source of Google's magic is the two-way dialogue with users. With every query, we give some knowledge and get a little back. They are learning. It's a feedback loop. Then we give some more and get a little more back. And this is going to be interesting as we go on. How can we learn more from users? Users ask, Google answers. This is our core function. Can't Screw this up. From the user's perspective, that's all we want. We give you something, Google, give us good results back. But we must unobtrusively turn the table. 
tables. One good strategy is this. Implicitly pose a question to the user, provide background, give the user a way to answer. Do you know how Google does this? It's right in front of our eyes. How do we answer Google over and over? And they tell us, and it's very simple when you think about it. So back in the day, Google was just 10 blue links, right? Which result is the best? Titles and snippets provide the background. The answer is the click, click through rate. Answer is the click, right? Very simple, right? Image search, why do you think it's always a jumble of images, right? Well, it looks good and the UI is great, but imagine they can reorganize these and figure out which is the best, a hover, a click, et cetera. That's their answer. This is how Google learns, right? And going further into a thing, they just give more examples via, um, look at how old Google looks right there. For example, some knowledge cards need an extra tap to fully open. On the left, an extra tap means the user wants lower classifications and an overview. They are continuously testing and we are the guinea pigs. Now this one here is a little heavy, all right? This is a heavy document. I haven't like read it five times, which I probably should, but we need to start at the top. It says the web ranking team, this is from 2014, and you're gonna learn a lot right here. Um, so they're talking about some things, mobile versus desktop user intent and behavior. Basically, there is a difference between mobile, what people do on mobile and desktop, and they make a differentiation. That's a huge word, differentiation. I actually nailed it. I thought I was gonna botch that one between the two. So mobile is different than the um, desktop. And check this out, you're gonna like this. So we're coming down, I think it's page 11 right here. So as shown in the combined metric, blah, blah, blah. But here's what I really wanted to learn. We can derive another metric combining these to see another aspect of the diverged user behaviors, the ratio of singleton abandonment. Do you see that singleton abandonment? Do you know what that word means? Singleton abandonment to, and then there's something confidential, blah, 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 something confidential. So what I've done, I've pushed it to ChatGPT and had ChatGPT guess what the confidential words might be. B. And here we are, I'm providing you with a text from an email dated blah, blah, blah. I said, can you guess the confidential words? And here's the text right there. I just typed it in because I really want to know. And it says the first confidential appears to be a single word. Possible replacements could include sensitive terms or concepts. For example, something like click through rate or click through rate analysis. So let's just read that passage as if it is click through rate because it's very revealing. And like I said, this is speculation. I'm allowed to speculate, right? Satisfaction appears not only when the form of abandonment, let's pause there. Google wants to know what's the best document. Therefore, satisfaction is, that's the best. I'm satisfied. The best document, number one SERP. Satisfaction appears not only in the form of abandonment, but also click through rate. In other words, does someone click through? Ding, that's a good one. And the, uh, the singleton abandonment, do you see down here? Singleton abandonment. That means if somebody comes to your website and they go off your website and they never search that term again in that session, that's singleton abandonment. Look, I even asked ChatGPT to clarify, what is singleton abandonment? Is the term used in the context of search engine optimization and web analytics. It refers to a situation where a user performs a search query and clicks on a single search, then abandons the search without clicking on any other, right? Google likes that. It means that you were served. You were served the right information at the right time and you were satiated, you were satisfied, right? So coming back to here, let's say satisfaction, right? Appears not only in the form of abandonment, but also of click-through rate, according to ChatGPT speculation. The second confidential appears to refer to something broader, potentially a phrase or multiple words. Given the context of modeling, blah, 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 could be one of these four, and it's speculation. I'll say it again, in case someone from Google's watching. So let's see, it says user engagement metrics, search quality metrics, and I'm, it's not as good as the first one, but don't forget that. We always say, put the query, the answer to the query at the top of the article, why? Because someone just wants an answer and Google will reward you for it. Although your on-page time right? It's going to be lower potentially because you gave them the answer right away. Google is looking at everything, all the clicks, all the hovers, every aspect of a user's behavior is the magic of Google. Now, I believe I've saved the best slide for last, but have you heard this? You've heard this before. First impressions matter. And the same goes for SEO. And I'm going to show you why. So coming down here, I love this slide, the three pillars of ranking. Oh my goodness, straight from Google, the body, uh, what the document says about itself, the words on the screen, right? Anchors, they call them anchors. What the web says about the document, backlinks. Backlinks have always mattered, right? It, user interactions is the last and it's in blue. It must be important what users say about the document. We've been over this, right? Clicks may be, you know, called user interactions, attention on a result. I think that refers to on-page time. These things matter, but let me ask you a question. It's blue right here. What if you have a new article? What if you have a new website, right? 
you don't have any user interactions to show Google, I am good, this is good, right? So Google's gonna test. I've seen it time and time again. They're gonna push something up in SERPs to test with a few people. And if it stinks and they bounce and they keep searching for that term, Good luck ever ranking for that anytime soon, especially for newer websites. Redacted, that doesn't help us at all. User interaction signals, this yet again is that flywheel effect of, you know, user does a thing, Google then learns. User does a thing, Google then learns. Let's see if there's anything else here. Redacted, redacted, that doesn't help us one bit. Redacted, redacted. So the bottom line here is, look at all these redacteds. You need to make sure you are creating content that is excellent out of the gate and how you do that you can push your answer towards the top you can have excellent supplementary information you can have quizzes on there to hold people on longer if you answer the question and they don't bounce and they go somewhere else to ask the same question that's very important you are going to win time and time again in google now before you go i want to give you this last bit of information this is called the search quality evaluator guideline straight from google it's 176 pages long it is humongous go here identify many content do you see this identifying the supplementary these two you need to focus in on here you need to learn what is said here it's, it's too big it's too large to talk about in video there's too much information they give examples i mean look at this document this is going to help you now that you know how google kind of works it's going to help you straight out of the horse's mouth this is what google wants